Well, hello everybody and welcome to another episode. And today we're going to look at some fully featured major brand film SLRs that you can buy today with a lens for around about £25. I'm talking about the last of the film SLRs, cameras manufactured in the late 90s and the early 2000s. They're all automatic, although they can shoot in manual, or at least this one can. This is a Canon EOS 3000N, which I think was sold in the USA as the Rebel. All the major manufacturers made cameras like these. I'm concentrating on the Canon today because that's the one I've been using and shooting. But they were made by Nikon, they were made by Minolta, they were made by Olympus. There's a whole range of these cameras that are out there and are very, very cheap at the moment. If you've ever shot a DSLR, or indeed any digital camera, even a compact, then the experience of using this camera is going to be very, very similar. The whole layout is similar. The control wheel here on the left is similar. It's got similar symbols that you'll recognize from digital cameras. And it's very much like shooting a digital, except that, of course, this camera has no digital sensor. Instead, it has film where the sensor would otherwise be. If you've never shot film before, these are a great way to dip your toe into the waters and see if you like it. And if you want to come back to film after an absence, there are a few cheaper ways to do it than this. I'm going to go out and shoot this camera shortly, but before I do, let's have a little look at it. So there's our little Canon 3000N and you can see just looking at the top deck there that it's very very similar to a digital camera. We've got this control wheel here with all the symbols on it. What have we got? Uh, we've got off, program, shutter priority, ap prior aperture priority, manual and then we've got a whole bunch of modes for example, close-up or action or portraits, where the camera will apply some appropriate settings for you. If we switch it on, we'll see that the screen there comes to life. And there's the autofocus. It autofocuses very quickly and it makes a wonderful, wonderful sound. And all your information is displayed on this very convenient and easy to read LCD screen. So we've got remaining shots, or we would if we had any film in it. We've got an exposure compensation indicator at the bottom here. We've got the aperture uh, indication here, which will change as we move the control wheel which changes the aperture in the lens. These lenses, by the way, are Canon EF mount lenses. And this camera will shoot, I think, all the EF lenses, including possibly some digital ones as well. So it's very a very uh, comprehensive camera. Let's have a quick look inside. And there's all the film camera operational bits. Let's see if I can fire it. It doesn't want to find focus. I'd like to show you it firing. And there we are. There's the camera firing. So this really is a very easy, very convenient camera to use. This one came with a kit lens, a 28 to 35. It's not a very fast lens, but I'm hoping it's quite a nice lens. Now, clearly, these cameras don't have the classic SLR styling, and 
there aren't any of those beautiful tactile mechanical controls that literally physically connect your hand with the actual mechanism that you're using. But it, it, it really doesn't matter. We've got this control wheel operation that does everything you want it to. We've got a self timer button here. We've got a function button here, which you push to change the functions that are changeable with the control wheel. The shutter button is perfectly placed here and it's a very modern thing. Half press to focus and then fully press to take your shot. So it clearly takes a very different approach in its control systems than the traditional SLRs or what you might call the classical SLRs like this one, this Practica here. But you know what? I like this control method. It was designed to be a great improvement over the older method and it is an improvement. It's simpler to use. It's easier to use. It's, I don't know, it just feels, it just feels right somehow. I don't necessarily prefer it over the SLR cameras of the past, but don't look down on these cameras because they are very, very effective machines. The involvement of the older cameras is nice, but just having this one button to push is really, really nice too. You can shoot this camera manually, but when a camera is this nice to shoot in auto mode, really, why bother? Now, as I can see it, there is only one thing that might stop somebody buying one of these cameras now, and that is the fact that they're just not fashionable. They're not cool at all. Uh, certainly not in the way that the classically styled SLR cameras are. They're not considered fashionable. They're just too new and too modern. And they're kind of at the point where most film gear was, say, 10, 15 years or so ago. Just surplus to requirements. Just so much old junk that nobody really wants. And that's where these are at the moment. However, fashion is a variable thing. Buy one of these cameras now, keep it for a few years, very soon it will become as fashionable as anything else you care to name. In any case, fashion is somebody else's thoughts and here at Xenography we like to think for ourselves. Anyway, enough yakking from me. I think I'm going to go out and shoot this camera now. Hello everybody, I'm in the churchyard today. I'm shooting this camera. It's the Canon EOS 3000N. This is one of those cameras that was kind of off my radar for a long time and I really didn't look at any of these later Canon cameras or indeed any of the later SLRs with really too much interest. But these cameras are now seriously, seriously cheap. I bought this camera with a lens. Uh, it's a kit lens, it's not particularly fancy. It's a 28 to 90, so it's really versatile. Uh, F, what is it, F4 to F5.6. I bought this camera with this lens for 25 pounds. This is a fully featured SLR camera. This camera and cameras like it represent pretty much the pinnacle of consumer film SLR technology. They really didn't get much better than this. And it's a very, very easy, very, very simple camera to shoot. Everything's auto. It's got aperture priority, shutter priority, and manual settings, though I've been using it on aperture priority because that's my favoured method of shooting. It has auto focus so it's really really easy to focus. There's absolutely no problems uh, with focusing. It's very quick, very rapid and it's a really nice camera. It's a little bit plasticky but so what? It's solid and it's a 35mm SLR that's almost free and it's one of the easiest ones to use that there has ever been. You'll notice of course that the design is very very like uh, a digital SLR, a DSLR. In fact it's pretty much identical to it. 
the design was established here and most DSLRs you can buy now will look something like this. So apart from the sensor, this camera has pretty much all the tech that you'd find on a consumer level DSLR. And that makes it a really great film camera because there aren't many with that capability. It doesn't have the classic styling of film cameras from the 70s and the 80s, but honestly, how important is that? Are we really going out to, you know, as an exercise in style, or do we want a really good camera? This camera is far easier to use than any 60s SLR and probably any 70s SLR as well. This is a real nice piece of kit. Right, here's one of my shots. Let's take this for reference. Did you notice how quickly that auto focused? Really, really quick. There's absolutely no problem at all with auto focus. It doesn't seem to get confused either. Quite a few of the early point and shoot cameras do get confused, they do take their time to work. This one doesn't, it seems pretty much instant. Slightly longer delay perhaps for that one, but it really isn't much at all. As, you know, for all intents and purposes, this camera auto focuses pretty much instantly. Okay, I've just shot some grass. I'll show you what I just shot. And it's this grass here that's clearly at very different distances from the camera. And it seemed to cope with that quite well. So there really doesn't seem to be much wrong with the autofocus system on this camera. And as I say, it really does make a nice change from having to focus manually it's such a such a different thing to have in an SLR at least for me anyway all right so let's have a little look at what we've got here so we go and take some more images put my glasses on right so here's the control dial so you can see that the, that's very familiar. Anybody who's used uh, a DSLR will be familiar with that kind of layout and that kind of setup. Let's see what we've got. P, which as far as I'm aware is uh, all auto program mode. Then we've got TV, which is Canon's version of shutter priority. AV, which is aperture priority and M, which is manual. We've also got a few other things here. A, depth. Don't know what that means. We've got ISO and a rewind. I do know what those mean. And then we've got uh, lots of various settings such as you might find on uh, a consumer camera today. Things like night shot, um, close up, macro. On the other side, we've got this LCD screen i'm not sure if you can see that there with all the info on it is it switched on yes it's switched on so we've got the um, remaining number of shots which is 34 i think in this case this ca oh 29 we've used more than i thought this camera actually counts down so that when you put the film into it it'll wind it all the way onto the take-up spool and it then moves from the take-up spool back into the can. So you start with 36 and then count down from 36 as you use those shots up. So that's quite useful, you know how much you've got left. Let's go and do a bit more photography with this remarkable little SLR. So this is a fairly versatile uh, zoom lens. It's 28 to 90. So let's have a look what it does at both those ends. Uh, and we'll shoot one at 50 also, just for comparison. So here's what we're going to shoot. Chaps in the park playing cricket. So here's one at the wide end.
that was at the wide end now on now we'll do one at the long end and I'd just like to pause at this point and say this camera makes a wonderful shutter sound it really sounds like a camera <laughs> which can't be bad let's go to the long end now twist it there we go So there's a shot at the long end. Should we do one at 50? Just for a laugh? Why not? Let's do one at 50 just for a laugh. Talk about wasting film, eh? And there we are. Now, it's important to remember with these cameras that once you have zoomed towards the long end, if you're working at maximum aperture, that aperture is going to close down. So I guess like a, a lot of modern kit zooms, you're going to need to pull out, uh, you know, open up that aperture if you go to the middle of the range or indeed to the wide end of the range. It won't come back to maximum at the wide end automatically. It's a minor point, but if you want to shoot uh, wide open, that's worth bearing in mind. Mm. I think it really does speak volumes for a camera if you can use it one-handed certainly I need to use a one-handed camera today otherwise I couldn't film so it's certainly convenient for me right I'll find another couple of shots there's a shot around here that I often have made and I hope it doesn't get too monotonous doing these uh, similar shots. I always try and chuck a few original ones in as well, but I think if I do some similar ones, well, that's uh, that's going to be pretty good for anybody who wants to compare how various cameras and lenses work, because it gives us a gives us something of a standard to work with. So we're just coming up to it around here. Before we get there, though, let's have a look at how the camera handles this shot we've got um, some trees up above and a fairly bright scene uh, out ahead there so here's the shot so let's see how it handles what are really extremes of exposure took a little while to focus there but it still did a good job of it. I reckon that was about one second and that's gonna be enough. Sorry about the wind noise, by the way, it's very blowy here today. I would think uh, a response time, a focus time of one second maximum it would be more than enough for most photographers unless you're shooting sports or some other very fast moving malarkey. Ah, I think I've gone past my shot. Hold on. Yeah, I have. It's here. Do not enter. Oh, nice quick focus. I fear we may see some rain before very long, but then I guess that's a good reason for bringing out a cheap camera rather than a very fancy and expensive one. Let's, how it, let's see how it does with background blur at 50 millimeters. Now I found focus there very quickly and that's pretty good because we couldn't really, uh, rather it was an overhanging branch and that can't have been terribly easy to focus on because there's a lot of other things going on in the shot as well so this autofocus system is doing very well so far dandelions i like dandelions let's see how they look Again, a difficult shot to focus on. The camera's doing really well. Let's see if we can photograph the cricketers and the cricket fans.
very groovy nice afternoon's cricket going on there really does look like it's blowing up for rain here so I may curtail this little expedition and bring the camera out when things look brighter but let's see if we can grab another of my standard shots with maybe one or two others before the rain comes down and finally defeats us. Ah, now this might be nice. These flowers have all come out just over the past week. They weren't here when I was here a week ago and it's nice to see them. Let's see what the camera makes of them. Okay, I think that's, whoop, I think that's gonna look nice. I think I'll do one more of those while I'm here. It's actually really easy to place your focus point. There are three focus points horizontally across the middle of the frame. And one of those points will always catch focus. This is a really good system. Ah, now this may look kind of nice. I think it's a birch tree or a silver birch tree. Check it out. It starts here. And it goes all the way up there and it's a very beautiful looking tree indeed so let's try and do it justice with our cannon have we done it justice i don't know let's try and do it justice again right that took three goes to find the focus point that I wanted it to focus on but it did do it and it did get there and I think that should be rather a nice shot too right we're gonna do a macro test apparently this camera can get down to or this lens rather can go down to 38 centimeters so let's see let's see how close we can make it go we're gonna try photographing this flower That one there, that rock, that white one. I'll probably have to stretch a little bit, but let's see how it goes. Well, you know, I think that was actually closer than 40 centimeters. It was certainly very close and I can't see any problem at all with this camera's macro capability. Excellent. One great thing about this camera is that it's very light and portable. It's all plastic, it's very tough and it's very resilient but it's got a really lightweight and that's nice because there's nothing worse than bringing a camera out and it being a real weight around your neck. This definitely is not that. Here's a kind of an interesting building, a sort of a dystopian terror building. Look at that. Yeah, I know, I did too. I've wasted one frame, but there we are. Practice makes perfect, I suppose. This may be interesting. Sometimes lines and angles will make a shot for you. And if you can see those lines and angles, then uh, those are the sort of the natural building blocks for an interesting shot. It's busy in the suburbs today. Proper busy. I seem to have mostly used this lens at 50 mil today seems to be a fairly convenient setting I've not really needed to change it for any reason other than to test the lens and explore it a little bit maybe try this shot <laughs> lots of lines lots of angles I do like streets because there's a lot going on in them 
I like natural images as well. I do love images of plants and flowers and so on, as you've probably noticed. But I do like a little bit of street action too. I do like photographing people at bus stops, queues of people, lines of people at bus stops. I think they can make really interesting subjects. Not sure exactly what the interest is. There is a line of people over here, so let's see if we can see them and do something with them, perhaps. I wonder how many shots we've got left now. Seven. We've got seven shots left. And I'm not going to wind this film right the way to the end because I want to leave a little bit of leader sticking out. So when it gets to one shot, I'm going to stop and take the film out manually. I do find that quite a tricky thing with some auto rewind cameras is that they don't uh, leave that leader out for you. So it's very tricky. I don't know if you've ever... There are tools that claim to be able to fish out a leader that's gone inside a cartridge but I've never had much success with them they're hit and miss mostly miss actually in my experience so by far the best way if you're developing your own images by far the best way is to leave that leader out of the can if you can here might be an image Right, we're just coming up to an interesting bit of street furniture. Well, I think it's quite interesting anyway. Barber pole. Let's see how that looks. I reckon it's gonna look like a barber pole. Well, this might make a potential shot up here. Let's see what this looks like. Lots of colours, lots of shapes, lots of stuff going on. We'll see what that looks like. And there is quite an interesting building up here. Let's go and have a look up here. See what's what. It's always interesting to see how things will turn out on film especially black and white film you never quite know what you're gonna see again very quick autofocus I've really got no complaints about this system this is a system that seems to work well well certainly under the conditions I've tried it in and I would think it's worked so well for me today, I would think it would work pretty well under most conditions that you want to throw at it. Right, we're just coming up to a vaguely interesting bit of architecture, so let's see what we can see up there with our remaining three shots, which is actually two shots because I'm going to leave one in the camera. So let's see what we can see here oh that may work out to be interesting possibly final shot for today and there we are so that's our 36 shots or 35 I'm gonna walk back up the road develop the film and see where we're at so see you soon so we've been out to shoot the camera and we've put a roll of fp4 through it which you will have seen by now but due to the weird time dilating effects of video production i haven't yet seen so i'm going to go off and develop those shortly but i will say i've really really enjoyed shooting this camera it's not 
the fanciest camera. It's a nice, simple little piece of gear. It's made entirely from plastic, or almost entirely, but that doesn't matter. It's good and strong and durable. It's so easy and simple and pleasant to shoot that I'm definitely going to hold on to this one. So, thank you very much for joining me today. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and ring that bell thing before you go. And if you like the content on this channel and you'd like to help it grow and develop, you can do that at patreon.com forward slash xenography. As always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time for some more xenography. Thank you.